Captain Burrow, something wicked stirs. Anastasia Starstrike turned her weapon over in her hands and bellowed her command. To me, Secretors, we will hold back the chain rasps. Castigators, shoot us a path out of here. The Secretors formed up around their leader, shields angled towards the circling geists. The Nighthorn's attack had slowed now but the spirits were regrouping and the numbers grew by the minute. The castigators headed towards the temple door, firing thunderhead maces as they went and destroying a dozen more spirits. The castigators strode through the temple door and into the cold night. A chill frost covered the grass between the burrows and the soft moan of the dead echoed through the darkness. All three warriors held the great bows ready, scanning the twilight for more foes as they headed for the iron route gate that surrounded the burial ground. Then the glaive wraiths came. Sweeping down from frost slick burrows, their hunched forms and horse like faces betraying the agony of their existence. In eerie silence, they drifted forwards, glaives leveled at the stormcast victims. So hello and welcome. So we're going to be playing through the Glaive Wraith Ambush. Now to start, you are going to need the large mat folded in half. You're going to need the uh, graveyard side. You want your three castigators without the Griff Hound placed on the lightning circles. And your four Glaive Wraith Stalkers on top of the Death Style Markers. You're just going to need your dice and your range ruler provided in the early issues. Uh, things to go over, there are no rules about the terrain that's marked out on the mat, so I assume you can walk over that no problem, because it is just a basic uh, tutorial. Also, units when they move, you want to keep them within one inch of each other within their unit. So this unit, this is a unit, whereas before you were using them as individuals, you're now going to be using them together and every model needs to move and stay within one inch of its counterpart within that unit like so so that's very important they can be in any configuration in any shape or form as long as one of their those models is within one inch of at least another model within that unit so let's get started first of all the glaive wraith go first so they have only movement and combat they don't have uh, any missile weapons or anything like that so there's no shooting so they move six inches and then when it comes to combat they compile in they hit with their weapons and then you allocate the damage um, obviously six inches is not going to clear the entire way but you can get there quite quickly still so you measure from the front to the front like so like that and then making sure that the rest of the unit stays in cohesion you should be able to move them without having to uh, measure everything so just keep them in line like so now um, they can't do anything else so it goes over to the castigators um, so the castigators they can move five inches but there's no point moving there's nowhere really to move and uh, it's better just to stand back and shoot away so um, we'll skip the movement phase and we move on to their shooting phase so each one gets one range attack so you can roll all three at the same time um, something to remember is that if you roll a six instead of a three four or five to hit then you get to roll on the d3 chart which we covered in an earlier video but i'll pop the tempo uh, i'll pop the table up in the corner up there so you can see um what result you get when you roll it uh, but essentially um if if you roll a one on a two you get one damage three and a four is two damage and five and six is three damage so it's quite easy to remember it's half and round up so uh let's get shooting um now i i did do this scenario before and i wasn't happy with the lighting and stuff so i deleted it but 
Um, literally one turn wiped them out in one lot of shooting because I rolled two sixes and then rolled uh, for free damage on both of those sixes. So let's see if this lasts. So I need a three, four, five or six to hit. Two hit, no sixes. Uh, each Glaive Wraith only needs one damage to uh, be destroyed. So we remove two of them. Oh. Okay, so now they haven't got anything else they can do this turn. So now we go on to move in the Glaive Wraith Stalkers in their turn two. All right, they don't have any shooting, so you skip right over to the combat phase and they get to do their piling, which is three inches. And as you can see, they're easily within three inches. So you just pop them straight in like so, and then they get their attacks. Now each one gets two attacks. So that's four dice all together. And they did a four, five or six to cause damage. Now you gotta remember each castigator needs two damage to be removed. So let's see what we can do. Aha, that's a pretty good roll. So one Castigator has been removed from the game. Okay, not bad. Now we move back on to the Castigator's turn. So get to do two shots and uh, let's see what they do. A six and a two. So the two is a miss. The six means that we get to roll on that D3 chart. The burst of celestial energy. Let's see how much we do. Six. Now, it, um, you can tell that's the highest amount of damage you can do already. Uh, half of six is three. So that's three damage. So that kills both of them without a problem. So um, as you can see, it is quite easy for the Cascades. For the narrative of the tutorial and the game so far um, it fits anyway um, but later on we will be getting um, wounding rolls after the hit rolls and also armor saves as well which we'll be exploring later on so it'll be a lot harder to take out as many models in one go so now that we've done that Let's see what the game looks like if we use our whole collection so far. All right, so now we're going to be playing this game with all of the models that we have so far. So we've got our sequiturs over here, the castigators or castigators, uh, but I like the sound of saying castigators more than castigators. Anyway, uh, got the Griffound, our chain rasps, our glaive stalkers, and our Mayamorn banshees over here. Now, uh, based on the fact that the Night Haunt in this scenario go first, it only makes sense that the Night Haunt put down their stuff first. But I'm gonna do it unit by unit. So they put something down and then they put something down. And that way we could try and sort of get a bit tactical with myself. It's kind of like playing chess with myself, but we'll see how it goes. So just to keep the theme, I'm going to put the Glaive Ray Stalkers down first. And instead of straight in the middle, I'm going to put them further over here. Don't know why, I just feel like I should. So they're over there. I'm keeping in line with the markers as well, just to keep it fair. Um, I'm going to put the castigators down. But I think I'm going to put them over here. Now, as, as I said previously, there is terrain marked out on the board, but we don't have any rules on how to interact with those yet. So I'm playing as if they're not there. Um, right, next, I'm going to put down the Maya Morn Banshees over here. Um, because they move a lot faster and uh, it means they can get across the board to the castigators oh no I'm crossing it now they can get across the board to the castigators faster because they can move faster so that's something 
Um, you know what? I'm gonna put the Griffhound next to them as well. It acts as a, its own unit, but it's a great support unit for the Castigators. Um, all right, these chaps, the Chain Rasps. You know, if I shove that over, then I can cram these chaps in there. Just have them down the middle. And that way I can take them whichever way I need them. Right, so. And then the secretors, I might, I might as well pop the secretors down the middle. Like so. So, um, chances are they will get bogged down by the night horn. Uh, sorry, the chain rasps, but that will keep them busy. Um, I do want to avoid getting in to come up with these chaps. Um, Cause they're not, they're not quite nice at the moment. Hang on. Two dice on the four plus, two dice on the four plus. Ah, oh, you know what? Double checking the rules actually. I do want them over here against these guys because there's less of them and they have the same hitting and damage characteristics and a number of attacks as the chain rasps at the moment so that's well worth um, exploiting okay I think I'm happy with that right let's get started so night haunt go first um, so the Mimorn Banshees, they go eight inches. So they're gonna go straight clear across. Right to the Castigators. Blade Wraith Stalkers, they go six inches. So they're going straight across as well. Like so, now what am I gonna do? Um, I think there's a good chance they could be overwhelmed, so I'm gonna throw the chain rasps that direction a bit more. So. So, oops, there we go. Let's knock his stuff down. All right, I'm happy with that. Um, nothing's within piling range. Uh, so we move on to the Stormcast. Um, so the Secretors move five inches. So they're gonna run straight towards the Clay Frave Stalkers. I'm hoping that I can. Yeah, I'm within piling range as well. So that means um, they'll be able to get their attacks in before they do. So they might be able to whittle them down enough um, before suffering any casualties. The, let's have a look. Griffhound can run nine. He could easily go over there and support them. But as I said before, I want to. I'm going to use him to slow down the. Uh, the chain rasps. So. I move him up to there. Remember, you can't be. You can't move within one inch of an enemy unit. So. Make sure he's an inch away. Even though he will be piling in. It's just to get used to that rule. They're gonna stay put, and I'm gonna do my shooting. All right, so three attacks. They're gonna shoot the mine more banshees. Ah, only one damage. 
That is absolutely rubbish. That was not what I was hoping for. But that's one dead. So that's something. All right, now to do pylons. So it's within three inches. And they are just within three inches. So they run into them as well. So we'll start with this little chap here. He gets these two attacks. He needs a three, four, five, or six. Let's have a look, see. Does one damage. Shame he doesn't have a special for uh, rolling sixes. Um, now these get their attacks. Uh, they get two attacks each. And they need a three, four, five, or six to do one damage. Wow, that's really bad. One, two. Okay, that's two dead. All right, now it's the night haunt turn. So, um, they're going to move right up in their face. And then they're going to pile in. And these are all going to pile in on the Griffhound. Poor Archibald. Archibald the Brave. Right. And there, there. Okay, we will start over here. Now, the Banshees all get one dice each. It's a four, five, or six to hit, but each successful hit does a D3 on the D3 damage chart. Blimey, two. All right, let's see how much damage they do. That's one, and that's three. So that's two Castigators dead. Oof, all right. We'll go over here, four attacks on a four plus. Oops. One damage. Each one needs two wounds, so we'll just pop that there as a marker. Now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six in base contact with young Archibald there. I only got five dice to spare, so I'll roll that twice and then roll two more dice. You only fours. That's one. Two, three, four, five, six. And then the last one. So he is dead twice over. He only has three wounds, so he is removed. All right. Not bad. He's done what he's supposed to do. Um, so moving, there's nothing to move. So he's going to do shooting at the Mimorn Banshees. That's a misfire. So let's roll that again. That's a five. So it hits and kills one. And then pile in here. Get six attacks. Okay. Remembering he's on one. Uh, one, two, three, four. That's more than enough to kill that. Or off okay and then I'll put that back there right back to the night horn so I think they're gonna be okay over there so I'm gonna focus these lot over here so just move them around try and get them in position I can get as many base contacts as possible. Oops. Remember, it can't be within one inch of the enemy unit, but you also need to be within one inch of your buddies in the same unit. Okay, they're now going to 
to the three inch piling. Got them all in combat. Right, now we're going to get their attacks. Two attacks each at four plus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Got five dice. Uh... Oh, I've got to roll that a lot. Yeesh. It's 18 attacks. That's going to hurt. I'm going to borrow this so I only have to roll this three times. One, two. Reroll that one. Three, four, five. Yeah, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's enough to kill them. So again, remember, there's no. We're only doing rolls to hit. There's no rolls to wound or armor save. There was these guys would be hanging around a lot longer. Uh, yeah, that was a nasty, nasty round. Damn. All right, over here, two mine more banshees hitting on four pluses. Oh, with the D3, it's got a roll of one or two for this castigator to survive. If it rolls a three or more, it wipes it out. And there you have it on the four, it's dead. The night haunt have it, and it is a very, very successful round for them um so i will be honest i did play this through once before and it was a very close game it came down to one castigator and one glaive wraith stalker and the stormcast had it but this one was uh, by a mile a country mile and i think it's all down to how you um, initially deploy your units if you can just get the right units in the face of certain other units you can exploit their weaknesses um, while making most of your own strengths and boom as you can see they did well because they could get into the range units faster um, the Griff Hound, I think, next time should have gone straight for the Banshees and stopped them from getting into combat so soon so that the Castigators could shoot at them more. Uh, and that might have made them survive longer to shoot at the Chain Rasps. But you know, that being said, it's always good to play a couple of goes. So I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please remember to uh, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get the notifications when I upload more videos like this one. I'm going to be doing um, issue 5's playthrough as well where we get to learn how to use magic for the first time. And um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned and uh, if you want to keep up to date also, there are plenty of links down below in the description for awesome groups, including the Chilling War Gamers uh, network website and Facebook group, um, where you can find all sorts of awesomeness. And there's also links down there as well to support the channel. So if you feel like donating to help improve the content of this channel, then go right ahead. I won't hold a grudge against you i might even send you a winky emoji so there you go um so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace now to start with you are going to need the large mat fucking alarm